With the market rotating to value stocks, are you looking for good stuff to buy? Well, here's value investor Michael Burry's five biggest holdings. So digging into Scion Capital's recent 13F filing gives us some insight on some great stock picks that the very popular Michael Burry believes in. If the big short believes in these value stocks, then I think they are worth a look. As always, a reminder, I'm not a financial advisor, just a YouTuber making financial edutainment, so invest at your own risk. Now to be fair, investing only because something in the 13F can be a mistake. The fund you're following could have sold by now, or what made it a good investment three months ago could have changed, or even the price action means that the opportunity has passed. If Burry bought at $50 to sell at 60, and then you buy at 60, and then a good investment for him might be a bad investment for you. However, I think it's a great starting point for some stock ideas and if the price is similar now to the quarter that they were purchased in by the fund that you're looking at, and the story is still good, then maybe it's still a good, great buy. So I'm going to go over a first impression of Michael Burry's five biggest holdings, four of which he's been loading up on the last quarter, and I'll be talking about which ones I'm buying. If you want to see in-depth reviews on which of these stocks I decided to buy, then please like and subscribe to the channel. So coming in at number five, with a purchase of 1.5 million shares last quarter is D-Now, which is an oil industry supplier. They make equipment for oil exploration, drilling, refining, and pipelines. With the energy sector resurgence, this looks like it has potential if that story continues. Burry has already won big as he bought near the bottom at $7.18 and the stock is up to $10.97. To buy now, we have to believe there's still room to run and the oil trade isn't over. I think if the energy sector dips, then I still believe in it for the next few months as we return to economic activity. For my preliminary research, I like to look at analyst price targets for a ballpark a fair value and then when it passes that test i can make my own value numbers before buying so looking into morning so looking at morningstar morningstar gives d now a 13.6 dollar fair value and simply wall street gives them a 25 dollar value so there might be room to go looking at the price action two oil fell so hard and d now hit a double bottom before rebounding strongly in march i do think there's room to run still one bear case is that the biden administration is not friendly to legacy energy promising to cut out fracking and already ending the Keystone pipeline. This is a definitely this is definitely a look deeper and buy the dip stock for me for a position trade that might last for like six to nine months. But I'd have to definitely learn more to feel more confident at this price. For number four, we have Lumen Technologies, another company I hadn't heard of. As a value investor, that is actually good as less popular, less talked about stocks are more likely to be undervalued. This company is a telecom infrastructure company that installs internet lines, for example. Burry bought in at 10 bucks and it is currently up 30% at $13.47. Have we missed the move? The Ford PE is still only 7.4. Morningstar has the fair value at 18, so maybe there's still some room. They could be more of a turnaround play as they had negative almost 40% earnings growth over the last year, but are looking to get back to strong positive growth next year with analysts predicting 35% growth next year. Maybe with the huge work from home movement, there's more growth in the telecom space and the internet space. Um, however, analysts say they are too dependent on old telecom like phone lines, for instance. So I might feel safe for a short term trade to see if I can get a few more bucks of appreciation, but I definitely need to learn a lot more about their revenue prospects before truly investing in this company. I rate this one as a maybe with more research. I need to definitely understand the company better. It's outside my circle of competence. All right, for the next three, his biggest purchases were actually where he bought calls, which means he's very, very bullish, at least in the short term. He also, in theory, could have taken profits already, so we need to be careful. For number three, we have a classic blue chip stock in former Buffett favorite, KHC or Kraft Heinz. Burry added 589,000 shares worth of call options, so he's very strongly bullish on mac and cheese. All right, KHC was 30 to $31 in the fall when he would have been buying, and it's $37.85 now. With such a huge fall from the top from its previous high in the 90s to the strong bottom, I do think the price action shows some very strong turnaround potential. Morningstar has them at almost $50 and Simply Wall Street $72 for their fair value. If those are remotely correct, then Kraft still has some strong upside. Kraft had some bad acquisitions hurting their balance sheets and their brands have lost some luster as my generation in particular is less loyal to the big name brands, especially in the food space. They are still the fifth largest food manufacturer in the world, however, and are refocusing on building their core brands. If they're able to get back some of their shine, then this could be a once in a generation kind of buy. Kraft Heinz has a dividend yield of about 4.2%, which might not be totally safe with their debt being so high, but it can pay you to wait very well for the stock to recover over the next few years. 
This stock is a buy for me now to be a part of my long-term dividend portfolio. I'll wait until this market correction stabilizes and hopefully I'll be able to pick it up at Burry's buy price in the low 30s. Number two, Burry bought 84,400 shares worth of call options in Pfizer. Hopefully he bought that before the giant spike that they had last fall when the vaccine news was announced. Maybe he flipped them already and did what did well during that time if he got in beforehand. Or maybe he still has them. We don't really know. But if it was a long-term play, then the good news is PFE is at a similar price now, so it might still be a good buy. And Morningstar has a fair value of $40, and with 6% growth rate, I could see it creeping up towards that number. With a strong dividend yield at 4.5% and forward PE of 10.8, this could definitely still be a safe long-term buy and hold. Will we get much price appreciation? It's hard to say, as pharmaceuticals are complicated, tricky companies and it hasn't really appreciated much over the last year. PFA has a large lineup of drugs and strong R&D that could probably support its current level of price at the very least. They have sold $154 million worth of COVID-19 vaccine in 2020 and are expecting 15 billion in revenue on that drug in 2021. Although this will be a lower than normal margin product. I'm going to sell puts that manufacture a synthetic dividend now until I can pick Pfizer up at a good price. If I can get my cost basis close to 30, then I'm gonna feel fantastic. And for number one, ironically enough, his largest holding is Citigroup, also famous for one of the collapsing stocks of 2008, what made very famous. He loaded up on Citigroup calls and he might have already made a killing and he might be out. It was around $50 last fall when the rotation was just beginning to the finance sector and it's at $74 now, so maybe we missed the move. There has been a lot of talk about a rotation into financials, which were undervalued for years, but this rotation has been happening for months. I'd want to dig in and see if there's more legs to this financial bullishness. Morningstar gives Citigroup a fair value of 74, so it's not that much of a steal, but it is still undervalued. However, if they are able to achieve the predicted earnings per share growth of 11% next year, then it might still be a very strong long-term investment, especially with a 2.9% dividend. City is sitting on lots of cash, and if rates do rise, they would have a very favorable environment to start deploying out that capital. So I do like building some financials in my portfolio. However, I'll feel much, much better if we can get a small dip in the financial sector. So City for me would be a buy if it dips slightly stock, or maybe sell puts to get that price down. It looks like Burry has won big so far with all of these picks, so hopefully we still can too. So which one of these five Burry stocks do you think are still a buy? Do you have any other insights? Let me know in the comments below. Also, subscribe to see my in-depth videos on stocks coming soon, and check out my channel for the five stocks Buffett bought big last quarter as well. Again, thanks so much for watching. My name's Joshua with Milk Money, where we believe you can make your money, make more money. So we'll see you in the next video. Peace.